Coastal Championship wrap up and another giveaway. Growing up on the water with fishing in their blood, Matt Airy and Brian Thrift have spent the last 10 years competing against the biggest names in professional bass fishing. Their success is landing them ranked among the top anglers in the world. If you're looking to become a better angler, then this show has all the answers. Join us and follow along to get actionable tips, tactics, and tried and true techniques directly from the pros. Welcome to Let's Talk Fish. Mic on. I've heard of it. Yeah. We are. I've heard of it. We're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> um, we only about. took one week off, and I think we forgot what we were doing. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, Drift and I were here, sitting here talking about a, a new good bourbon I found. So, um, <laughs> what did I say it was called? <laughs> <laughs> it must not be uh, that good. No, <laughs> uh, it's not in my glass either. If anybody's wondering, but. Um, now He's got some kind of maybe that should be the trivia question tonight. What bourbon's in Matt's before. glass? We've done that before. We have done that yeah. before. But you weren't yeah. drinking bourbon. Yeah. I'm getting so, ready to go get the trivia question so, here. So moment. Brian so, <laughs> so I'll be so leaving smoke. momentarily. <laughs> What's up back. everybody? <laughs> just let us know. And I just want everybody to know for the record, this is L T F seventy seven. Se- kind lucky seven. I have come I might up, be off like a episode or two, but it's seventy seven. I have come it's up with seventy five seven. trivia questions. Maybe 76. No way. I've done at least and 20. And half of 30, the answers have actually been right. <laughs> 35 minutes ago, I said, Thrift, I just need one thing from you tonight. I said, I need a trivia question. So Strong no. It was a strong <laughs> no. <laughs> he said, I got nothing. I, I don't. So, I, have it, I have nothing. Jeff <laughs> is going to slide in the other room here shortly and come up with a trivia question. I'm going to so, hit the old Google up? I, yeah, I'm just going <clears> to. And gonna, see what it comes up We got about. another if, awesome sportsman's warehouse gift card to give away tonight yep well, so we got the sportsman's warehouse gift card giveaway along with the bass master membership we'll do that at the end of the show as usual um so tonight's main topic is the coastal championship wrap-up where smoke had a good solid finish i know you had a rough first day but correct me if i'm wrong did you have the biggest bag the second day i did of the whole tournament no not the whole tournament no, i mean i second. mean of the whole field the second day yes Sorry. okay Right. By like two pounds almost. Yeah, so <laughs> somebody said, man, Smoke's having a rough time. And I said, he's got another day. So y'all do realize he has another day. And I don't remember. I don't like being that deep in a hole. I don't mind being a little bit of a hole, like if I can see out. But I couldn't even see out of this hole. Well, you got out of it. How many, <laughs> so where were you at first day? I know you had five pounds, but where was that, um, where did that put you? I don't know. I was down in a mid 100s probably and you finished 18th 17th 17th so you jumped well over 100. yeah well over 100 yeah. places yeah so that's um not too often do we any of us jump 100 places in a tournament after one day um so that was a heavy and, and you know what was bad was the the second day on friday well the first day i weighed four keepers for five pounds 15 ounces so i had two keeper smallmouth which in the at the Cumberland it event, it there? was fifteen. We had a tournament exi- exemption for fifteen inch smallmouth. We could weigh. That was going to be my next question because yes. when you and I were there for FLW a couple of years ago, when you won, it was eighteen. Right. Yeah. Well, no, when I won, we had the fifteen inch exemption also. Oh, that's right. When, the the time when Scott won was eighteen. Was 18. You had to have yeah, eighteen. That's right. That's right. So the first day, I catch four keepers for five pounds fifteen ounces, and I got two little baby spots. And uh, the second day. Um, I called two 13 pound limits. So I know the conditions. So I went from catching changed. nothing to like every smallmouth in the lake. So the conditions drastically changed, right? Yes. All right. So what did you change? What What did you do the first day, <laughs> and what did you do different the second? All right. Day? That's what everybody wants to know. All right. I'm going to just start with practice because. I had some preconceived notions about Lake Cumberland going into naughty the naughty boy. You naughty boy. Well. You had one there, though. <laughs> Just listen to me out. All right. So we're going to Cumberland. I do get on the Internet, do some research. The lake's like 30-something feet low. So I'm thinking all these big largemouth that i seen in April have got to be on bait somewhere in the middle of a gut or something like that. Just out in the middle of the pocket, following bait around, not really sitting on any structure because there's very little structure in the water. So would you agree with that? Wouldn't you think that? Yeah. yeah. If the lake's down 30 feet and there's nothing in the water, that's where they should be. There was a little bit of stuff in the water. Yeah, there was a little bit of rock and stuff, but that's about it. So I spent all my practice time looking for those largemouth 
congregated around bait, and I never found it. For, for three days of practice, I missed one day of practice because I was doing an appearance at a sportsman's warehouse in Lexington. I want to thank everybody that came out to that. But um, So I spent my whole practice doing that. <laughs> thank you and, for that. And I knew that if I didn't find anything as fall, fish are still biting top water a little bit, whatnot, I'll just go fish the bank in the tournament if I don't find anything. So first day of the event, obviously, or the event, obviously I didn't find anything in practice. So I just go fly down the bank, and uh, first thing that morning, I catch a keeper smallmouth on my new Domeki square bill that'll be out in January, and then I lose a good one on it early. This is quick, like the first twenty minutes. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, we're gonna be good. So like four hours later, I've not had another bite, and I mess around and catch another little keeper smallmouth and two little spots. So that's my whole day the first day, and the second day, it came, it got slick and sunny. So I started out cranking, and I caught a decent one, one probably close to three pounds first thing. And then I went about an hour without a bite, and I just I started thinking, you know, I've, I've got to switch up. I've got to do something, but I don't want to slow down and drag a worm or something like that. So I picked up my trusty jig, and oh, uh, the oh, old trusty uh, jig. Oh, I thought you were going to say stinger. <laughs> yeah, no, nope, not the stinger. I picked up a jig. <laughs> my heart about stopped when you said jig. <laughs> so I picked up my jig, and... In about 35 minutes, I had 14 and a half pounds, and I proceeded to cull two and a half and three pounders all day long for the next six hours. And well, it, you found the winning pattern the second day. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. Was, like if I had a do over on Thursday, did. I feel like I could have won. I, I was uh, watching <clears throat> up Shaw, and you know me how much I like to flip a jig around, like rock and transitional stuff. And yeah. I was sitting there licking my lips when, because he, dude, he was catching a. And congrats to Andrew. Yeah, by congrats the way. to he's, Andrew. He's that a was friend, a, friend of and that's his ours. second major win this year. You know, he that's won. Right. Uh, he won at Lake Cherokee this year on the FLW tour. So. Both in very similar fashion. Yeah, also. both in very similar fashion. Um, I guess. They and were, both on smallmouth. That's right. Both on. Uh, <laughs> did he weigh in exclusively nothing but smallmouth the entire tournament? I think so. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he did. Which Cumberland is definitely, you obviously know, and uh, Scott Martin obviously knows, is a place that you can 100% win on 100% smallmouth. Yes, you um, can. A lot of big smallmouth. In <laughs> so a couple things real quick. Um, by the way, that first day, it was cloudy and stuff on y'all, too. Oh, it was. You know, the first day was a day like I've never experienced on the Wasn't water before. Yeah, but it was and like it was everything. It was everything going on. All right, so we blast off at yeah, daylight. Yeah, had a bad, bad yes. thing of storms, too. Thursday right? morning, I get up, I check my phone. It's 68 degrees. And then I scroll over, and at 12 o'clock, it says 38 degrees. Huh. So I'm like, <laughs> it's going to get cold. I'm going to need to put some long johns on, bring my heavy rain suit and all this, be prepared. So so I put my long johns on that morning, and I'm just I'm sweating like crazy. And as soon as we blast off, you run about 10 miles down the river, and it's like you hit a wall. The temperature instantly dropped like 25 degrees. Wind was blowing 20 mile an hour. It was raining. It was like I've never seen that before, like that drastic of a change. You know, Bill Taylor would have probably loved to fish that tournament. Oh, Bill would have loved it. <laughs> Bill would have loved it. Him and his little what's the jig he throws, the bitsy, not the bitsy bug. What's the jig he throws all the time? A booze bug. Booze bug. Booze bug. I said bitsy bug. <laughs> um, Joe Carpenter asked about the LTF carpet decals. You see them there on the table. Those are available. Uh, he asked where to purchase them. They're uh, available on letstalkfish.com or ltfgear.com. Uh, letstalkfish.com is probably the easiest route. But, um, yeah, we do have those available along with plenty of hats in stock and uh, and some T-shirts and whatnot left. Um, let's see. Uh, a couple things real quick. Uh, I want to make a couple announcements and – Oh, uh, we'll get back to some questions, Warren, uh, for Thrift and the Costa Championship um, and some, some more details of his pattern. But um, the SOS Tournament, yes, the Special Ops Survivors Tournament, Lake Norman this Saturday, guys. English Choice is putting that on. Uh, Thrift will be there fishing it. I will, I will, be, I, the, yep. I will be out of town. Uh, Thrift's fishing with Trent, right? Yep, me and Trent from Angler's Choice are fishing it. And, uh, you know, Angler's Choice is – they are – the title sponsor of this event right. and you know something else is cool i need to get jeff to throw this up there is my buddy joe holland texted me while i was in kentucky and asked me if i was fishing the sos tournament at lake norman and i said yeah i'm fishing with trent from Angler's Joe coming Sh down? no joe's not okay. coming down but he said his next text was i made the trophies you're gonna want to win this one 
and he sent me a picture of the trophies he made and they're pretty sweet i'll try to see if we can get jeff to throw them up there yeah, but uh like he, it's that. a handmade axe from jeff heard his name so he came flying back <laughs> all right we'll get jeff to see if we can put it up there but joe made these cool handmade axes from maine and they're just it's not going to be an awesome trophy but it's a great benefit tournament it's 50 percent payback 50% goes to the special ops survivors, and 50% will be paid back, like I said. $150 per team, $20 big fish pot, 100% payback on the big fish, and it's going out of uh, Queen's Landing from uh, Safe Light to 3 p.m. So if you're in you're there... on top of it. You got the brochure. I, I got the brochure right, right here on my phone. I'm reading it <laughs> verbatim, word for word. Yeah, I was going to say, he never knows that many details about something, but then I realized we were reading it, so... Yeah, so come out and support it. It's going to be a great event. It's going to be a good time and get to meet a lot of cool people. Uh, Let me see if I can find that. Get Jeff. He was talking about the trophy that the SOS tournament is actually putting up. Um, Thrift said if he finds it, he could text it over to you. All right, Jeff came back. I'm looking for it. Jeff came back with our trivia questions. So we're good to go on our trivia tonight. Um, You're welcome. (laughs) If I send you this, can you get it posted up here somewhere? And it cannot be Googled. That can be Googled. It can't be Googled? I don't think so. Huh. I don't think so. Okay. Everything right. can be Googled. It except for what, I'm except for what Jeff, to... Jeff was having me Google earlier. That's today. not indexed yet, bro. <laughs> or when I come up with a trivia question, because you can Google and find the correct answer. And it's or Matt will give it away before we end the show. You <laughs> yes. About 50 uh, <laughs> All right. We got over 200 viewers. Guys, uh, All right, appreciate... Jeff, I just sent you the picture. Can you put it up? <laughs> Look at that. Uh, tell me that. Phone. Tell me that's phone. not awesome. No, that is awesome. Yeah, so that's that's the trophy for the SOS tournament. If, if for no other reason, I would fish because of how cool that trophy right, is. Right, exactly. That's is that awesome, not awesome? And that looks like something Joe would make. Yeah, so, like look at that. Yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty sweet. <laughs> so if Jeff can drop it's that It's going to be awesome. There, Whoever wins is going to be very happy. Um, <laughs> all right, excuse me. A couple other things real quick. Um, congrats again to Upshaw for the big win. Uh, Luke Duncan's mom passed away. Guys, keep Luke and his family in your prayers. Luke's yes. a close friend of mine and, and, and a great guy. And if you don't follow Luke Duncan's Low Budget Live, his last couple podcasts were just one of the many reasons why I love Luke. And uh, he lays it out there. But if you get a chance, I challenge each and every one of you to go back and watch Luke's last couple episodes of Low Budget Live. Um, but Luke's a good friend, good guy, and our thoughts and prayers go out to Luke and the loss of his mom, um, who uh, lost her battle to breast cancer Yeah. Uh, after several years. Yeah, I don't think there's very many people at all that haven't been touched in some way or another by cancer. So. Yeah, it, and it sucks. And we've talked about it on the show uh, before, but it cancer sucks. Um, no other way to put it. All right, that, guys, I'm already getting trivia question answers. I mean, what's up with that? Uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> Thrift and myself will be – at the Rock Outdoors, yes, next no, Saturday, November the sixteenth. Not this Saturday, but next, next Saturday, Saturday, November the sixteenth, from ten to three, uh, down there chatting about fishing. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll talk deer hunting because there I'm allowed to. <laughs> um, I'll talk deer hunting, fishing, whatever y'all want to talk about. Come by, see us. We'll both be giving a little seminar there. Um, they've got a big open house deal going on down there. Uh, the Rock Outdoors is located in Lexington, North Carolina. Um, and like I said, it's an open house going on from Where 10 we, to 3. 10 to 3, yeah. 10 to 3, yep. Uh, Thrift and myself will both be there. And we probably should throw in a box. I've got some in the truck. We of, need to bring some hats there. We'll have some Let's Talk Fish hats and T-shirts, Yeah, we'll bring too. some Let's Talk Fish so stuff. So any, anybody that uh, that would like to pick up a hat or T-shirt, we'll have them there at the show. Uh, just make sure you ask us because they'll probably be in the truck. Yeah, um, most likely. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> But, guys, hope to see everybody in the area come out to that. That'll be a good event. And uh, anything else on my housekeeping? I think that's it. I didn't even know what all you had, but that was good. I had a question about the carpet decals, but uh, I already answered that. Let'sTalkFish.com <laughs> has the carpet decals available. And so I saw a couple questions. Um, I have a question that somebody Jeff's got a question. Whenever y'all are good. From you or from a viewer? From somebody from a viewer. your questions right now. I don't need to know anything from you. I'm okay. good. Uh, uh, you know it all. I want to see the <laughs> trivia question Jeff came out with. Okay. Well, while I'm doing that, Jeff, Let me would look you at like it. to hit us up with that question? And where it came from? I'm not going to tell you anything about the question. What are you talking about? You, just, you just said ask you me? have a question. Oh, I thought you were talking about the trivia question. Good. No. <laughs> so the question is, I had a buddy call me the other day, and uh, they're headed down to Lake James. Up to Lake James. 
Uh, well, no, Where are they he lives coming in New from? York, so he's down. No, he's to like coming James down, Hill, man. Yeah, technically. Why would he come down to James? From he's New from here. York? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but now lives up in New York area, and he asked me about Lake James, and what's the deal with it right now? What would you do if you're going to Lake James tomorrow? If it's I was going to Lake James, pretty good. Right yeah, now. I would. I would throw a top water jerk bait jig. Stuff like that and cover Wait, water. Wait, is he going tomorrow or is he going like Saturday? Because Saturday is <laughs> going to be like 30. Uh, yeah. It's to the weekend. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't know about that top water bike. Yeah. It's going to be like Maybe 15, a jerk, Ned Rig jerk bait. Hey, a fluke? I bet you catch one on a fluke up there, too. Yeah. Dead oh, sticking yeah. a fluke, working a, a fluke real slow. Yes. Um, and if all else fails, I have never been to James this time of year. But them smallmouth can't stand a little grub. Yeah, around real slow. I went there a long about on. six or seven years ago in the winter, and I caught them really good on a swim bait, like a kite tech or something. Yeah, like a little small swim bait. Okay, yeah. So the grub bite might be somewhat similar. Yeah, but yeah. If they'll bite the little paddle. Possibly. Tail, yeah, I would throw it too. Um, thrift. Somebody asked. Oh, Stephen Guthrie said, "Where's your sun drop? It must be I slightly it. out. Of, it is. It it's right bar- here. It was barely out of the frame. Here's Nobody my sun drop. It. Uh, and it's delicious <laughs> as well." Somebody ask. Uh, you know, I actually found some sun drops in a gas station in Kentucky while I was at Cumberland. Is that unusual? I didn't that, know Kentucky didn't have them. I know a lot of places up north. Yeah, I mean, pretty much anywhere outside of North Carolina doesn't have them. So. Missouri does. Well, yeah. I say that. Occasionally. They may not have that many, actually. I, but they, they do. That is where it was invented. <laughs> um, what color jig were you throwing? We had a question earlier about what color jig you were throwing. At, I at was throwing a hand tied jig. And the the color really doesn't have a name. It's not sold. It's a special color, we'll call it. But it looks good with a green pumpkin trailer. That's the most important thing, jig fishing. Color what? doesn't matter on a jig, as long as it looks good with a green pumpkin trailer. Did you actually say, did you answer the question, what color the jig was? Yeah. What color is it? It's of no concern. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it was I, probably brownish or yeah, probably. I said it looks good a with a green pumpkin trailer. Well, so do, I mean, I think a black jig looks good. With That's a all that matters. Trailer. If your jig looks good with a green pumpkin trailer, they will bite it. All right. So next, I mean, Upshaw was throwing a green pumpkin trailer. Exactly. Uh, all right. Some shade of brown. Like there's five thousand different shades of brown jigs, and I don't think any one of them's any better than any other one. I mean, people get to nitpicking. Oh, it's got to have one strand of chartreuse or two strands of orange. I don't believe that. If it looks good with a green pumpkin trailer on it, it'll work. They'll bite it. Get you a jig with a good hand-tied skirt and a dang good hook and whatever color you got confidence in and put a green pumpkin trailer on it. Exactly. And exactly. Now, is that right? Yes. All right. Straight out of the thrift handbook. <laughs> um, let's see. uh Okay, I did see I did see something earlier about uh, Clarence Belcher said he had a tournament coming up at Cumberland. He wanted your GPS coordinates, so I can vouch for Thrift. He's not going to give you GPS coordinates, but what general area did you fish? The lower I end, fished the from Conley Bottom to the mouth of Wolf Creek, that kind of middle section of the lake. What is it? How many miles stretch is that? Four or five. That's miles? Pr- no, no, it's longer than that. Is it more That's than probably that? a. 10, 10 or 12 mile stretch, I'd say, through there. Okay. So I was talking to Kyle yeah. Welcher on the phone earlier. He had a pretty strong finish there. He'll be a rookie on the Elites next year, as a matter of fact. And he uh, <clears throat> he told me that that Mid Lake area seemed to be his best. Yeah. His, his best area, too. I, I don't know. Kyle finished somewhere around 20th or something. But All he right. had, Everybody's bashing me on my jig. You mean, what do you mean bashing you? Oh, because you're, you're, you're hiding the color? I'm going to tell you the color, but nobody's going to know because nobody can get them. Well, just tell us what it Special consists Special made thrift? Yes. Brown, green, pump, green pumpkins, round, It was rubber. No, it was just regular silicone rubber. Okay. It's a mixture of a uh, like a dark green pumpkin and a light green pumpkin. So it's kind of two-tone spread around. It's, so it's, it's not all just a straight green pumpkin. Rubber. I don't know the name of the... Actual silicone skirt tabs, but Joseph Carver said, "Nice way to skip around the answers." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can tell you the name of the the guy that makes it. It's the name of the jig is called the Green Wizard, but it's not for sale. So the Green Wizard, the Green Wizard. So who makes it? Louis Hole makes it. Okay, so it's a sh- it's a shooter jig. It is a shooter jig. Um, <laughs> Let's but it's see. like two different shades of green pumpkin. Savage pumpkin mix. Yeah, it's a pumpkin mix. 
Green, yellow, red jig. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, what kind of green pumpkin trailer? People had that question twice. Which the I was throwing two trailers. I was throwing a speed crawl on one, and then I was throwing a Demiki three inch air crawl on one. And the uh, the reason for the two different jigs was the air crawl. I throw it on a jig where I trim. This here's you a good tip for your jig fishing. This is something I don't think we've ever talked about this before, but something I do a lot when I want my jig to fall faster. I'll trim it up short, and then you know how everybody takes a jig, and you see they they cut the top rubber that comes out around the head. They mm-hmm. cut it real short, where it's just sticking out around the like head, a like spider jig. Yeah, I call them spider jigs. Yeah, well, I do the opposite. I turn my jig upside down and cut the rubber that hangs down the shank of the hook off. Okay, and that thins the skirt out, and then when you thread your trailer up on there, it doesn't poof the skirt out, and it makes it fall a lot faster with that small trailer. So if you're fishing deeper water, or you want a really fast fall, you can trim that bottom skirt material off and thread that air crawl up on there, and it'll allow that jig to fall really fast. And that's how I was catching a lot of my fish because I would pitch my bait up there, cast out to the rock, and I would hop it up off the bottom really high, like three or four feet off the bottom, and that bait just comes barreling back down and hits the bottom makes a little poof of dust and line falls slack on the water and you know one's got it and you catch him uh all right so that was the goods so for that tip everybody can go to ltfgear.com and purchase a hat um <laughs> what i just thought what? i just thought it's a good exchange <laughs> that was a good transition yeah <laughs> might as well thrift said, thrift, thrift said might as well i just wanted to see what you how y'all would react more than the, cool. more than the viewers yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, we give away hats all the time. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, we'll add a signed hat to the trivia tonight just because Matt's you can't idiot. Google it. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell you, that jig bite at Cumberland Friday, that was like the best jig bite I've been I'm on jealous. in 20 years. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like a, a 1998 Lake Wiley jig bite. That's how good it was. they were. God, we were in high school. Yeah, like you would throw your jig up you on this rock college, and, and you'd like hop it off the bottom and then literally the line would, is like Was it mostly smallmouth? It's all smallmouth. All smallmouth. Yeah, smallmouth. yeah I never crazy. called it stupid large man. <laughs> <laughs> Why they gotta be stupid? Yeah. Because you didn't catch any of them? You ever dipped a jig and, uh, you remember when uh, uh, Fish Fishburn, did you watch his show back in the day? I'm sure you did. Oh yeah. So you remember Dude, I when, remember one episode where he was fishing out of a ladder in the middle of the pond. <laughs> Team Grandma. Yeah, Team Grandma. His grandma was yeah. a sponsor. And his secret was dipping his jigs and spinnerbaits in bean juice. Bean, like pintos? Or? Yeah, it's like he had like a can of beans, and he'd dip it down in the beans. Like baked beans? Like bushes? I don't know what the brand was, but uh, anyway, that, William Jackson's question made me think of that. He said, <laughs> he said have you Mark ever Mark Coulson it? said he just bought a hat and a carpet decal. No doubt the decal's going in his living room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's have, awesome. Have you ever dipped a jig in Sundrop? No, but I'll try it. Mm. Sundrop will save a fish if he's bleeding, though. I know we've talked about that a lot. But. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, Donald Keith Wise wants to know best jig rod. I, I tell you mine. I know I know what thrift is, <laughs> but I'll let you tell. I'll let him tell you exactly what model it is. I like the 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 Lewis Custom Pro, and actually the rod that I probably won more money on this year than any other rod in my in my boat was a seven foot four inch. I actually posted it on Instagram. Um, been a been a couple weeks ago. Seven foot four. Heavy action, um, lose custom pro, and I use that for uh, stroking a jig down at Gunnerville. I use it for casting jigs. I don't use it as much for really tight quarters because it's a really stiff rod, so it's not as forgiving. Um, but I do use it for several different types of jig fishing. And, and when I'll get tighter quarters, I want something that's not quite as stiff all the way through the tip. Um, but that's that 7-4 lose. Brian's, I'm sure, will be his signature jig rod. It is. But you want to tell them the specs on it? Yeah. My, so I have a signature series skipping rod with Fitzgerald rods. And this is a rod I've been using for probably eight or nine years now. I had Trevor make it for me three or four years before they were ever available to the public. And it's a six foot nine skipping rod. It's got a, uh, it's a heavy action, but it's got a about six or eight inches of a good soft tip where you can still skip with it. And then it gets to the backbone really quickly. To me, it's the perfect rod for fishing a jig on docks lay downs anything like i even use it out when i'm offshore fishing but i use it if i've got a jig tied on it's on that six nine skipping rod and another little thing uh, the fitzgerald lineup my signature series is going to get revamped next year for 2020 
going to have some newly designed rods add a couple different models so make sure you check those out when they come out i think we're going to try to debut them at icast uh, coming up in 2020 so there's going to be some cool new things coming from fitzgerald on that deal uh wilson is creeping back there anthony he said wilson's creeping back there he is he's been kind of in the corner like eyeballing jeff um we need to do another wilson feeding we do pretty soon uh brian claire wants to know what speed reels do y'all use mostly <clears throat> you know i i uh savage adam i just dropped that link in your messenger Sorry for the delay. What was that? Oh, okay, I got you. He, he wanted the logo. Got you wanting the logo. Hey, what Nobody about the, the logo? What about the know. trophy? Did you, were you able to get that up there? Or is that going to be? Is it doable? <laughs> it's possible, or but I don't want to freeze anything in the middle of the show. All right, never mind. I can show you. On the I tell you what. After the show tonight, go to our Lex Talk Fish page, and we'll have a picture of the SOS trophy up Good somewhere. Enough. We'll just post. It How about that? I can post it on the page. Yeah, we'll just All right. post it. On the it's going to go on the page. So I'm check that out. Post it in the group. That way, um, you got to join the group to see it. What speed reels? Yeah, that? there you go. Post it. In the about group. that. Post it in the group. All it's right, going Brian in the group Clary right said, uh, "What speed reels?" I, I use a probably more than anything. I use an eight to one now. Uh, it used to be a seven to one. Now I use an eight to one a lot. Um, what about you, Brian? I use a seven three to one. It's a Abu Garcia Revo STX, and to me, it's the perfect speed gear ratio. You know, I can do a lot of stuff with it. I can swim a jig. I can drag it on the bottom. It's fast enough to catch up to them if they're slack line you and stuff like that. To me, it's just the, the perfect all-around gear ratio. Uh, so, and I do have 7-to-1s and 6-to-1s and 5-to-1s. I have only have a couple 5-to-1s, and I only use those, and I think we've talked about this before, for throwing really big plugs, like 10s and stuff like that. The 5 to 1. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just because you will work your. I mean, you could do it with a six to one, but if you do it all day, you'll you'll uh, you'll wish you you switch to the five to one. Doesn't sound like it's a big difference, and it's really not a big difference. But when you make a thousand casts with it, it's yeah. a big difference. Then your forearms start cramping up by the halfway through the day. It's mm -hmm. real funny. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Dylan Smith wanted to uh, say he said, "Do you think that fog has any effect on a top water bite?" Uh, but m m you can answer the fall question, but also y'all had some pretty severe storms. And actually, when I was talking to Kyle earlier, he was on a pretty strong topwater pattern in practice. Mm -hmm. And he weighed in four fish the first day, and he had a pretty good bag the second day. But his deal was after that storm and y'all had that big pressure change, he could not get a sniff on it the first day. And in my experience with lightning and th what did y'all have lightning and thunder and everything? Nah, there wasn't any lightning or thunder. There thund okay, no. there wasn't. So, but like that morning, I said it was sixty-eight degrees. That yeah. night, when I plugged my batteries in, it was sleeting. Hmm. Like it, it was. I've never seen a temperature drop like that. It's crazy. So, what do you think about fog? How it affects top water fishing? We had that question. Um, I don't think fog affects it that much as long as it's not too drastic you know if you put your boat in and that water surface temperature hasn't dropped that much i don't think it affects it much at all like if you go fishing one day and the water temp's 70 degrees on the surface and then the next morning it's 45 and you've got a lot of fog but the water temp's still 70 i don't feel like that hurts it at all i mean those fish are still up there they're coming shallow i mean this time of year you know when you get that fog is that's letting you know you've got a you know a weather change you know it's you're transitioning from that um fall pattern to a winter pattern so the water temp's not going to drop as drastically as the air temp so a lot of times it messes with your head like i know it does i've seen it happen to me before at norman where i've got a you know blast off in the morning and it's below freezing but the water temp's still in the mid to upper 60s and you can smoke them on top water but it feels like you need to be slowing down dragging a jig or throwing a jerk bait or something like that Oh, uh, Jigs McThump said, y'all ever doink a jig off a pontoon and get yelled at? Said it happens to him all the time. <laughs> I've had a lot of pontoons. I've had day, a lot of pontoons. Have you ever been yelled at for it? I've never been yelled at that I know of. Not that I can remember. I've had people tell me not to fish around their dock before. Um, I had a lady one time actually at Moss Lake. Uh, oh, really? Caught a four-pounder on a shaking head, <laughs> of all things, out beside her dock. I believe Chet was with me, if I'm not mistaken. A buddy of mine was fishing. This is years ago on one of those Thursday nighters. And... Uh, now, that is pretty sweet right Shad there. Shad Bird. Shad Bird, I love it. Check, what is that? Check that transom plate out. Let me see um, this. <laughs> that's awesome. So, wait, is that posted to the group? We got yeah, okay, I just that's, approved that's it. That's pretty yeah. awesome. It's in the group. LTF Custom Shop. Let's Talk Fish 
custom transom plate. Transom plate. That's pretty awesome, Shad Bird. Just posted it. in the group. <laughs> um, so yeah, she came. To, she came down there and told me. So I put the. You know, Moss Lake's a small lake. Brian and I grew up fishing, and I put the fish in the live well. <laughs> she cause she proceeded to come down there and tell me that it was her pet, and that I needed to turn it loose immediately. And I said, ma'am, I said, we're fishing a tournament. I'm just going to take it about half a mile down the lake here, and then I'm going to turn it loose. And I said, if it's your pet, it'll do like a dog does. It'll come right yeah, back. Yeah, come right dog. back. <laughs> so I don't know if it ever went back to her dog, but she was not happy about me catching Jigs her Jigsmith Sump pet. said the people were in the pontoon when he donked it. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> then I, then I, 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 yeah, well, you know, I, uh. Sometimes I might actually go around that one. Yeah. And I might go to the next one. <laughs> just in fear that I might joint the pontoon. Um, all right. Uh, Jaron Brindley wants to know. It's a good question, Jaron. <laughs> you know, that's, I do that too. Like if people are on their docks. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I normally that. don't fish the dock. Like I'll go around it because I don't want to disturb them. But I remember a story Robbie Dye told me a couple years ago at Lake Norman. He was fishing something. And his there was a lady on a dock. And his co-angler threw a jerk bait up there and like hung it on her pants or something. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Who was his co-angler? I, I can't remember. It's Brian been a couple. Knew. I'll have to ask Robbie. We well, wasn't new. <clears throat> no, huh? It was like a draw tournament. It, it was a funny story. That's pretty funny. That, that's uh, yeah, that's good stuff. Shepard <laughs> said, uh, "Jeff, you're his hero, by the way. So you do have a fan. Thanks, Shepard. At least one." Um, <laughs> <laughs> When are we That's coming to Scott good. Fell? What's up, man? He said, "When are we coming to Clark's Hill?" I don't know when we're coming to Clark's Hill, but um, we'll be sure to let you know on the show if we if we get down there. What's that? Savage Adam. Oh, congrats to Savage Adam, who won his first uh, USA Bassin tournament this past Sunday. Oh, nicely it done. Looks like a pretty solid stringer too. So, congrats, uh, Adam. He's a he's a one of our regular viewers. Getting a lot um, of interactions in this show on my phone. Dang right. Hey, get dang after right. it. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Which, which pro angler gives the best seminars? Mark Carlson asked. So they got a long winter coming up here in Illinois. Um, I might have to go with myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, Lord. And you might just get to see those seminars That's really, right. really soon. That's right. Um, I don't I mean, there's can, a lot of things. I can get to certain people to yeah. – uh, uh, pretty much all the fishermen, I mean, you want somebody that can, you know, just hang out and talk. And I feel like most fishermen can do that. To me, that's yeah. what seminars are all about. You've got a, a serious portion of the seminar, and then you've got just a hanging out and talking with people, kind of like we do on Let's Talk Fish. Yeah, and you're probably like me. Anything that you're really comfortable with or you enjoy, right? it comes a lot more naturally. And, and most of the professional anglers out there that have been in this game for a while, um, are all pretty darn good at, uh, at giving seminars and there's so much stuff online it's just a click away that you could mark you could you could yeah. sit on youtube all day long and watch seminars and tips and, and you could you got 77 episodes of let's talk fish that you could be watching too on youtube um so uh you could get on that there is and do true that. i think the end 77 of... one hour episodes i mean Ooh, you're talking yeah that's a lot that's uh how many minutes is that thrift I'm 77 times 60, however many that is. I don't know. I was asking. <laughs> I was asking. But that, that, could, that could take up. <clears> and and I right think the time. best seminars also are guys that bring stuff you can actually, you know, look at. Like bring the baits and pass them around. Be more bring, interactive. Yeah, like a more interactive seminar. That's something I always try to do. I mean, I'll like if I'm doing a seminar on skipping jigs, I'll bring my jig rod and my reel and let people feel how I set the reel drag to – cast without kind of trying to minimize my backlashes and things like that i mean just there's so much that goes into each seminar being able to look at the equipment and get a feel for it is nice too uh let's see uh gerald swindle you're right chris bishop Ger gerald is probably a master at yeah not only educating but entertaining yeah he's um, a great he's, he's a part-time comedian <laughs> and uh i mean he, he really is he's he's uh and it, you know, you would think as good as some of his material is, it's scripted. But he's from the hip. He, yeah, it's all off a, the cuff. He's he's in, he's impressive when it comes to giving a seminar, just interacting in general. He's a very gifted person. But um, let's see. Yeah, Hank Parker's good. Um, Brian Clary said that G gave a good good testimony. Um, Jimmy's awesome. Jim, Jimmy Houston is uh, he's <laughs> he's kind of like Swindle. You know, Jimmy can give some some really good technical advice, but he's an entertainer too, and and definitely has the gift of gab but and he's he's he literally it's pretty darn funny 
Even ran my data card out at the classic. <laughs> he did what? He I literally burnt that. an entire data card at the classic <laughs> when I was shooting video. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Jimmy's awesome, but he can talk. He can, he, he can he, talk. He'll camera never dead. stop either. Like I don't see how he does it. It's awesome. I don't. It, see it, it is either. amazing. Like yep. I he like I'll go like working shows and stuff like that. After six or seven hours of nonstop talking or like very little breaks, he doesn't I mean, wear down. Yeah, you. I get wore down. My throat will get a little sore or something like that. But no, Jimmy goes forever. Michael Sanders wants to know if he can get some of them jigs. No. Call Louis Hall. No. Ask for that color and see what he says. Nope. Not I'd for be sale. I'd be interested to know what the answer Not would be. Not for sale. Um, yeah, Bass UTV, Jared. Yeah, they got they got a lot of good stuff. Oh, Anthony oh Randall speaking said of Louis. Seven, Anthony Randall said that's 78 episodes. Sorry, I didn't mean oh, to 70. You, Speaking of Louis Hall, the shooter we have 78. got it. That That's us? what Anthony said. It may be. I thought we said 77. Well, it, it says be. LTF 77 at the, the top. The episode, the number of episodes is kind of like Matt's trivia answers. I'm just kind of shooting, <laughs> like guessing. I'm just guessing. It may or may not be accurate, but it's 70 something. Okay, continue. Through. Google it. Google so it. Um, you mentioned Louis Hull, and I wanted to give a, you know, a shout out to Louis for all that he's done. But he's going through a, a little deal right now. He had some surgery yesterday. He's back home doing good. So. Everybody that throws his jigs and all, make sure you be thinking about Louie, and hopefully he'll get back out there and get to fishing for too long. Yeah, um, so thoughts and prayers with Louie. He's, he's, he's as good a guy as you ever met. Um, oh, <coughs> I saw a question about Angler's Choice. So we will both be at – I will be at the Martinsville Angler's Choice open house at the end of January – they have one in Lexington, Spindale, and Martinsville. Do you know which one you'll be at, if one or two or any? Or do you know the dates? Yeah, I mean, you don't. Like, of what? The, the Angler's Choice Open Houses. Um, no, I do not know the dates yet. Okay, I, I I know the dates. They're usually around the end of February, middle to end of February. But two of them are in January next year. Oh, I two is in fact. January. Okay. Yes. Um, because one of them I won't be able to make because I'll be in uh, Disney World with the family first trip to Disney World. Oh, so that'll be fun. Y'all say Is that prayer. the girl's first time going? Yeah, that's the girl. Oh, that's my yeah. daughter's first time. I never that'd went as a kid. That'd be fun. You never went as a kid? First time I went was when I took my kids. Never okay. went to Disney I World. went when I was like 9 or 10, I think. I went when I was 10 years old. My grandparents yeah. took me, and I think that's the only time I ever went. Um I want, but, to, I want to do the underground tour. That's the only thing. I want to go back to do the underground. That wasn't there when I went. What's when the underground went? tour? Like, yeah, all of Disney supposedly works underground. That's correct. Everything. That's why you never see anybody carrying a trash bag. Everything's underground. So, huh. like, you, that, need, you need to Google that tonight. It's, that's it's that's pretty cool. Read. Yeah. Um, I just think that'd be cool to, to go. You can supposedly do a tour of it and all that kind of good stuff. You, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, thanks, Brian. Brian King said we need to put this show on TV. Hmm. It is on TV. It is. Digital TV. Yes. <laughs> um,. I, I, I see a question, Brian Compton. I think it's the second time I've seen it. Demiki knockout. When and how would you throw it? I use the knockout a lot for a jig trailer or flipping. It's one of my favorite flipping baits. I actually won a tour van on Rayburn a couple years ago flipping it. So that's the two main uses I have for the knockout. Justin Boyd said, oh, Rusty Harper, thanks for that uh, reminder, too. And I've been seeing that float around on social media in the last 36, 48 hours. Jerry McGinnis passed away. And uh, if nobody knew, if you didn't know who Jerry was, go online. I challenge you to go online and just look up kind of his bio and what he did for the industry as a whole. Um, played a really, really, really big role in a, in a lot of different avenues in our industry. But one one of, of my fondest memories of Jerry was he was the host of The Fishing Hole. Yes. Do you remember that show? Oh, yeah. So when we were, shoot, when I was 8, 9, 10 years old, I believe, I was mm-hmm. watching one of my favorite shows on, te- on television. That was that show and then uh... – Fishing with Orlando Wilson. Those were my two shows. Fishing with Orlando. Whatever yeah. happened to Orlando I don't know. Wilson? He kind of just fell off. He did. I don't know. Uh, but Jerry... And, like, and, I can still remember the theme song. You'll sing it for us? No, because I can't sing it at all. <laughs> Please. At all. Zero. Just like the chorus. No. Like one just, line. Just no. whistle it or something. Hum it? No. Anything? Yeah. I can't whistle. The yeah. only thing I can whistle is like the maybe the Andy Griffith theme song. All right. That'll work. <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead and do that. You want to hear him whistle <laughs> no. Andy Griffith? <laughs> no. I'm not in the slightest <laughs> musically inclined. <laughs> Whatever you can do is fine. Do you remember Bassmasters back in the day too, when Jerry was one of the uh, the uh, the co-hosts for the show, and they used to tag 
a, or they catch a couple fish and they named them and they tagged them and they tracked them during the tournament and they showed where that fish was located and people would be like fishing right on top of it but they'd never catch them i know ne- i don't that remember was that. pretty that was something that is pretty did. new um that's pretty say, new. all right so here's here's bertha you know we caught her two days prior to the tournament and she started <laughs> here and they'd show her path and how she moved around it's really really cool um and i don't think anybody ever caught any of those fish ever but they fished all around them and all on top of them. It was huh. kind of interesting. Um, it might have been, might have had something to do with they stuck a hook in it right before the tournament started, but who knows. Um, all right. Let's see. Uh, huh. My dad's on watching. He said my cousin was in charge of the underground logistics at Disney World. Hey, we got you in right there, dude. I need, I saw your dad today at the I, Chevrolet deal. I, I mean, didn't know that. I mean, we, we he can probably get you schematics must and everything. Was or still is. Must be a very, very distant cousin. Was or still is. He said was. That's close enough. And he must not be related to me very closely, because if he's smart enough to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> is he an airy or just like? <laughs> he must not be an airy. He must be on my mom's side. Must be a Johnson. Um, <laughs> all right. Sorry, Dad. I love you. Said, I did uh, see him today, though. We talked for a good bit. Now, where'd you run into Dad today? Carter Chevrolet. He was getting uh, his uh, souped-up toy serviced, I think. Okay. And okay. I had to get my GMC serviced at the Chevrolet dealership. Why yeah, did the GMC that? place shut down? Did it really? And then they tried to take me to get me to take it to Kia. Huh? Said, that's what I said. They wanted so to they closed Chevrolet at the Kia dealership. So I called GMC. They're closed. Like, well, let me. Like, close forever or just closed? Done, so. Like, done. See you later. So. No more GMC. <laughs> there you so go. So they sent me the key. I said, well, maybe they've put the equipment over there and service and GM just taking over service. He's like, well, yeah, we, we can fit it on the lift. I was like, what does that mean? We might can fit it on the lift. <laughs> That's scary. I was like, right? y'all like reporting this to like GM? He's like, oh, no, huh? We can service it though. I was like, yeah, that's not going to yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I passed. So anyways. Teddy, we are. Um, I mean, uh, Anthony, we are. He said, Matt, he said, why, why what, is your what? dad at a Chevy dealership? I thought y'all was Yoda folks. My wife drives a Sequoia. I drive a Tundra. Look, we are Yoda folks. I can't help that he made a bad decision. It's no, a pretty good decision, actually. Yeah. It's a pretty awesome car. You drive a Dodge. What are you talking about? Not for it's long. It's been good. Too. He's been shopping. Yeah. I have been shopping, and I'm looking at a GMC. How's that going? Oh, I hadn't really started yet. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about it for two months. All right. I kind of got an idea what I want, though. If you think Thrift should just bite the bullet and get a new GMC, <laughs> put a thumbs up in the chat or in the comments. <clears throat> it's ridiculous. I got to get something. There's I need a good wife. deal, though. My, my wife replied to Anthony. She 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 sits back she sits back in the wings all quiet until waits, somebody starts talking about us pounce. not being Toyota folks. Yeah. <laughs> She's on it, boy. <laughs> Maybe you'd think a guy with a Toyota deal would try to get another guy a deal to buy a Toyota. Dude, if you'd have been running a Yoda for all these years, as much money as you won, that's I bet you'd have made over a hundred grand in bonus bucks. Well, somebody just switched to Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Just saying, it pays to drive a Yoda. Period. Um, Won't they just pay me and I'll buy one? Yeah, talk to them. <laughs> GMC. I'm getting GMC. Brian's truck sounded rough at Cherokee. It did sound rough at Cherokee. <laughs> hey, I think, I think your wife wants you to get a new truck. I, oh, I need she, one. Oh, She's she putting like enough thumbs, thumbs up for up. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> like Look it. here. It's a 14. It's got 140,000 miles on it. So it's it's had a good life. It's just getting broken. in. It's gave, I mean, it's been good. Scott Johnson, that is not true. He said, just traded my Yoda for a GMC. <laughs> um, I've never had a Tundra that gets four miles to the gallon. And you're lying if you said yours did. I bet some of them do because everybody jacks them up and puts those huge tires on them. Well, I mean, you're asking for them. You get all, <laughs> I think mine got like, when I put the lift on the Tundra, it was like maybe 13 or 14. Yeah, I believe. Mine gets about 11 towing. And, and, and I mean, there's not anything out there. A big, a big, v, a big V8 like that, 5.7. I mean, what gas V8 5.7 out there that's not diesel gets more than, like, 10 to 12 miles a year? Yeah. You, yeah. you know what happened to that Dodge that I drove for that year? What's your life 15,000 miles. Dodge gets I had to get a transmission put in it. And the guy at the dealership had the nerve to look at me and say, what do you do with that thing? And I said, well, I tow a boat all over the country. And he said, well, that's probably what's wrong with it. <laughs> I kid you not. His exact words. So I didn't know those trucks weren't made to tow. 
I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure your wife. My wants wife to says it's had a good life. Let's put it out of its misery. <laughs> 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 Have you not had any problems out of that dog? No, I really haven't. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Yeah. I've put two sets of tires on. Who wants a good deal on a Dodge with 140,000 miles? I might sell this thing right now. I can't right repeat now. what Brad Formby uh, put on there, but that's pretty funny. GMC. Put on there what GMC stands for. Uh, all right, so we got about 10 minutes. <laughs> what? Mark Carlson said, I can repeat that because that's hilarious. He said, I saw... Look, Clint Davis is sending me trail cam pictures and trying to rudely interrupt this show. And as much as I want to look at those pictures right now, I'm not going to do it. Um, said uh, so he saw Tommy Biffle blow the crotch out of his skinny sh- skin- skinny shorts <laughs> at, a skinny sem- shorts. at a sk- seminar one time. He said made for, made for a long afternoon. <laughs> oh my god! He do- he does wear some short shorts. I'll give him that. He does wear some short shorts. Whew. Uh that's funny. I saw Jordan Lee's got his Toyota on the market, um, the one he's been driving the last few years. I don't know the mileage on it, but um, <laughs> it is a nice looking truck. I saw that thing the other day, and I uh, I think I actually sent him a message or something because I needed a good hunting truck. But I, I offered him I don't know what I offered him a couple hundred dollars or something. But that's a probably a I don't know what that truck's worth a lot. Um, it's a really really nice truck. All right. Yep. Scott Johnson said you got permission, Thrift. Get after it. I mean, Allison's got she, – she's oh, yeah. five times since you no, she, something about trading trucks. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's it going to take? <clears throat> I don't, uh, I've always been like – I bought a 99 Suburban in like 2003, dude, this and I've lie. still got it. What, you still got it? What do you mean you still got it? Yeah. Yeah, Chuck's got it. I let him bark. Wait, did he buy it or you let no. him borrow it? Does, no. does anybody need to borrow a Dodge? <laughs> I mean, my, doesn't that thing have like 400,000 miles? Yes. It's got the old 454 in it. That's got, the one you had the chrome on the bottom? Oh, got, yeah. It's got stripes down the side. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> pimped out. I won't call it, but it's a low rider, dude. It was a low rider. Oh, it legit. was a low rider. Mm-hmm. But see, it was the, it was a low rider for a reason. Because the it was a three-quarter ton Suburban. It had the 454 in it. And the, the guy I bought it from... <laughs> His uh his wife was in bad health and she couldn't get in and out of the suburban factory because it set up so high. So he had it lowered had so lower. she could get in. Well, that was good. That was nice of him. Uh, thoughts on the Raleigh Lakes being exposed again this upcoming year? Hmm, I'm not sure what James is talking about. Y'all know what he's talking about? Um, I think the Bass Pro Tour is going back to Jordan and Falls. Okay, and so they're Paris revisiting. All, yes, it's about the same time or different time. I don't I don't know the dates on it. I don't know. I have no idea. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, those are good lakes. Uh, I mean, those are those are phenomenal lakes. And uh, hey, I mean, any publicity to North Carolina, I think, is good publicity. Yes. It brings in more people, brings in more money. It's good for all of us in the long run. Uh, all right. Let's see. Oh, Stephen said, "Can he borrow the Dodge and whatever extra boat <laughs> you got just hanging around?" Yeah, I, I don't have an extra boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Now I got people calling me. All right, I've got people texting me for last five minutes <laughs> about how Mr. Being Mr. Wilson's got, and they say we need a grill and some oil and that's, butter. That's a good point. <clears throat> Al, Alan Coe said when Brian buys a new truck, then he buys an Ultrax. Hmm. I my money's on he'll probably have a new truck before he gets an Ultrax. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm running a, he needs a new truck by the weekend yeah. based on your wife's comments. I do need. I got to go shopping. I'm going to start. Looking. If anybody hard. runs across a good deal on some trucks, let me know. All right, got like time. I need a deal. Got, 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 got time for a couple more questions. Fishing was rough this year. <laughs> yeah. He needs a deal. Struggle Getting a little thin. Yes. He's, she's struggle busting it. Um, when, Teddy Hutchison wants to know, when do y'all think that fall patterns end and winter patterns kick in? So y'all are definitely still for on a strong our, fall pattern <clears throat> at, at Cumberland. Yeah. For our area, I'm going with like mid-December. Yeah, and I've even seen it later than that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's when your water temp gets below 52, 53 degrees. I think that's when you start getting into more defined winter pattern. Yeah, and it seems like we've had a, a an extended fall. Uh, of course, this I don't know. It's all it's been all over the map, really. But I know uh, Lahue and when we did that LTF challenge a couple year or two ago, 
and I think LaHue and I were fishing against you and somebody. I can't maybe you and Wheeler. Yeah, you and Wheeler. Yes. And we were catching some fish in like a foot but of that water. Was a fall, that was a fall pattern, full on. Yeah, but it was in December. Was that December? I think it was in December. It I was cold. I thought it was that. later than that because well, No, that that one you're talking about no, was super. It cold. was that earlier was because wheeler, me and you fished against Shane and Cobb you and, and, I. and we won. Huh? After, That's right. Yeah, and that was after me and Wheeler fished Wheeler's against around you like show. October because he was yeah he was early on the show. We yeah. started in okay. August. Okay. Okay. Well, <clears throat> point being that around here it it, it can extend until Christmas, but um, it's t- yeah I, I'm with Thrift. He said fifty two to fifty three degrees. Yeah. I, I see that fifty to fifty three degree. Uh, uh, you know that I, I see that being kind of a. Turn it's about point. time for another LTF challenge, by the way. Yeah, we need to do another. I one think we should sure. mix it up a little bit. I still got four doe tags though, so I'm out. Not right this second, but no. I think the next LTF challenge. I think we need to get the fans involved. Yeah, that'd be good. And a way for them to compete. I like it. With Matt and with Brian against each other with something on the line. That's just a thought I just came up with. I think that's a good idea. If you all like that idea, let us know. (laughs) But we'll work on that. So next LTF challenge is going to get interesting. Yeah, that'll be fun. That's a a good idea. Maybe we can pull somebody else in. You never know. Um, Special. Yeah, you know what? You know, my wife mentioned that, actually. If that's what you're going with, Brad Formby has a pretty pretty cool idea. Yes, and and we've heard that before. Special guest idea. Your wives talk about life of a traveling angler. Um, we could have our wives on to listen in. <laughs> so, Allie would love to do. Like she mentioned that about a month ago. I think I told you about it, mate. That is real. Does that mean you and I get to stay home with the kids and we just? Sit they said something yes. about talking about wine or something. Though it wouldn't be fishing. What were they saying? No, 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 no. no. They the talk about gonna, everything. If the girls are going to sit in. They got to answer. It probably questions. hurt our reputations because they'd probably spill all the beans on stuff we don't want them to say. I ain't got no skeletons in the closet. I don't either. I don't know but what you got? But it 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 could happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sounds like you're a little nervous over no it. i mean I'm, i don't have anything i mean she knows everything about me she might tell stuff like i don't know stuff that i don't want told mm. <laughs> i could tell stuff that you don't want told probably no i don't really have nothing. not as much <laughs> i don't really have anything she's probably got the goods I, allison and i need to sit down and chat for a little while see it well i'm, I'm not gonna say stuff i don't want told but just like I don't know, everyday stuff. Like my OCD, she messes with me on that pretty bad. Oh, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. Um, all right, how much time we got, Jeff? Six minutes. Yeah, six minutes. Six minutes. 56.37 is where we're sitting at. So <laughs> Allie says, oh, the stories. Oh, the so, stories. I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ryan Bowman said he'll take Matt as long as he drives. <laughs> <laughs> as his partner, I guess is what he was saying. Sell tickets and give the money to charity. There's a lot That's of good, good ideas. Idea. I mean, I'm just reading. Do I have? Do I have bad? I mean, do I have a bad reputation as a? I mean, do I have a reputation as a bad driver? I mean, you have driving? hit me with a goose at Moss Lake before. The goose hit you. I didn't hit you with the goose. That sounds like hit, I grabbed a goose and hit you with. You it. were driving, and next thing I know, I get hit with a goose. So, well, you're I still don't hear. Well, I mean, you could have dodged the goose. No, I was aiming for it. So, yeah, Matt's driving is not the best. I mean, uh, he's never had a bad accident, but he did hit me with a goose one time. I've been clobbered before by somebody else, but we won't get into that. Clobbered. LTF tournament, yeah. make it an annual thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about that. What? We tried that. We we did we did a tournament. Well, we 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 hosted, we hosted a tournament. A tournament. It's a so hard for, for me to left. find redfish tournament dates. Then on top of y'all's schedule... Yeah, on the, two different tours. The problem is, Kenny, just as, as much as we'd like to do that, and that might be like something we do when we get close to retirement. What? Put on an LTF tournament every year. Lord willing that we're still running LTF when we're. If people, <laughs> you know, y'all still listen to us when we're like seventy-five and dropping our dentures in the class of, <laughs> in front of us and <laughs> cleaning them. <laughs> Matt's over there drinking. gumming his bourbon. <laughs> st- 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 <laughs> Matt, you hit a cop car. Gum. I didn't want to bring it up, Anthony. But Gum. Yes. Anthony, I did not hit anything. <laughs> uh, he's trying to get me going. Anthony, I'm not, I didn't want to bring it up, in. but I'm not giving in either. It's the only you know, that I brings know. up a lot of questions for me. I'm, Scott said he was there and Matt turned into the goose. <laughs> That's not, it was, first of all, Scott, it was at night. Second, yeah. you were not there. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Tanner Green, I mean, he must have fished that tournament that we put on. Um, 
Yeah, and it was a lot of fun. And we look, we loved every minute of it, and we would love nothing more than to do that again. And and, and Thrift and I both, and, and LTF, you know, we do, we donate to several different charity tournaments throughout the year, and, and try to help out when we can. Um, so you know, I mean, I'm not going to say we're never going to do it again, but uh, it, it's really hard to get all our schedules yeah. together. Yeah, especially like it seems like all of our events now are packed tight in that you know March to May time frame. It's hard to. It's hard to have a good turnout benefit tournament. That's and it's really tough to there. get Thrift to do anything because last time all he <laughs> wanted to do was fish. He got nah, mad that's true because he he he, they he had to let work the fish. tournament. He couldn't fish he, in his own tournament, <laughs> right? He he really was mad at us. He was royally. Well, pissed what's wrong with fishing that, in your own tournament? That, I didn't say there was anything wrong. We just needed help. All right. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was standing there videoing Shane LaHue fishing. I mean, I could have been fishing. I could have fished off the dock. You were hosting the tournament, so I could have fished off you the can't dock. Fish in your own tournament. Uh, oh, LTS Why tournament, not? New Year's. I Robbie mean, Robbie there's a lot of cool. anglers fish their own. Ter- there's even some pro anglers fish their own tournaments. Who? Um. <laughs> really? Same we gotta that. go there. Same. We gotta well, go there. Save that for a trivia question. <laughs> Save that for a trivia um. question. Yeah, Anthony Wilson is getting pretty big. The look on your face when we said who, you're like, huh? <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, if, if we need to answer, we'll answer. Oh, oh let's man. see. All right, so that we are, funny. we are, uh, um, oh, Brian Hunt said, I'd like to see five different species in five hours uh, challenge between you guys. That'd be interesting. I only I mean, know three species of bass, though. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be all <clears> bass. <throat> That's the problem. We'd have to catch a bluegill. We have to That's catch, doable. Uh, a crappy. I could do that. Maybe a hybrid. That could be a little that, tricky. Yeah, sometimes. that could be tricky in our spotted area. bass and a largemouth. Yeah. Um, we don't have anywhere you could catch like spot smallmouth and largemouth, <laughs> do we? No. Well, James has got spots in it now, doesn't it? I don't know. But <laughs> Anthony, you're <laughs> killing me, son. Oh. All right, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good point, uh, Gene. That's that. Yeah, he, yeah, that is one. What's up, fishes, Jeremy Combs it is, is watching. One that his What's own that? Tournaments. What? Uh, I said, Gene. Gene answered our question. I asked Thrift. I said, <laughs> that's why what, I was what, I said, what pros, That's why I was laughing. I said, what pros? I, <laughs> what that's why I'm surprised you had oh, to yeah, ask half the BPT tour. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I forgot that. Um, I didn't want to bring it up, point. but I wanted to see if you were. Stripers. Stripers, strippers. Brian, not strippers. Strippers. Um, I caught a stripper. I mean a striper one time. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready for the trivia question? We're ready for the trivia question. On that note, I think uh, we're ready for oh, the question. Oh, that's a good uh, loser bet there. Loser wears biffle shorts next time. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, no, Will please no. <laughs> yeah, I'll do I'm it. I'm not ashamed to show my legs off. No, I ain't neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, I like it. Loser wears biffle shorts next tournament. Um, <laughs> where are we going to get some biffle shorts, Thrift? I hey, think I you get them. Like, I can hit up PW. I can hit up Patrick Walters. He wears biffle shorts. Does he really? Yeah, he wears them short shorts. No. Yeah, Pat, yeah he does. You know, I, I bet. I'm sure. Shorts. That's a low country thing. It must be a low country. It is. Actually, it is. Yeah, it's like a George. Hey, we can hit up the Gallops. I bet, they, I bet them boys got all oh, kinds of short shorts. Yeah, I can guarantee you. <laughs> See, that don't make sense. Down with short shorts. <laughs> Tube socks and Nikes. <laughs> You've been to the low country Wait quite often. They, they don't do the short shorts and tube socks. Do you? Oh, you got to with no, the one red stripe favorite. around the top. You, you got to have it. Okay, Bruce we're loves gonna, tube we're socks. Add, we're going to add to that bet. Um, loser has to wear not only the short shorts, but you got to wear tube socks and some like just any pair of white tennis shoes you got. Like New Balance. Is that's the typical shoe? White new tennis Balance shoes with the tongues hanging white out. Yeah, shoes. white white Perfect. New Balance with yeah. the tongue hanging out. And and it's got to be in a tournament. How Bright. did the Biffle shorts originate in the Low Country? Bright. Have you white. ever been to the Low Country? Me? Yes, many times. Correct. Yes. They got a lot of little gnats and stuff. <laughs> Sometimes of the year, yes. Yes, uh, like that's no birds. good for short shorts. No. Mm. No. Let's see. Uh, all right, so we're ready. For, we're ready, right, Jeff? We're ready for our trivia question, guys. Trivia are, time. It's are, eight o'clock. <laughs> we are giving away a Sportsman's Warehouse. Gift card and, and a signed hat. And a, I threw that ooh, in. A sign, oh, yeah. ooh, and a signed, and a signed hat. hat. That Jeff threw in. So, so, um, so we're doing a signed LT. Why not hat. a carpet decal as well? And a carpet decal. And a carpet as decal. Well. Hey, let's give away the table. You want to give away the table? And the table. <laughs> and the table. <laughs> you All just right. got to. So accept. you now have a LTF carpet decal coming at you. 
a Sportsman's Warehouse gift card, and a signed LTF hat from the yes. crew. Um, there we go. Whoever wins, just shoot us a message on uh, what color hat you would like. We it's going to uh, be a black one because I love that silver. <laughs> okay. silver uh, so it'll be a black and white hat, black with silver. a white mesh back. Yep. Do they make with business silver. shorts with cargo pockets? I've seen that. Yes, question. they do. They 100% do they? It's they a little, do. little pocket. Yep. It's like these little angled side yeah. pockets. It's a little, right? little pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It's a mini yeah. pocket. Perfect. It's a mini pocket. You might can put the little stingers in there, but I don't know about the big ones. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right. All right. My tube socks, I can stuff them in them because they'll be up to, like, my calf. Well, that would be cool. Um, <laughs> all right, so here we go. At the start of tonight's show, at the start. Now, who's calling out the answer? Well, Jeff came up with a trivia question. Matt's ready okay. to seek him. So there's the hat, not I'll signed yet. Answer. We'll, uh, we'll hit you all up. Um, all right, at the start of tonight's show, which means not right now. So, yeah, you're correct, Jeff. They can't Google it. At the start of tonight's show, how many subscribers do we have on the Let's Talk Fish YouTube channel, and how many videos are on the channel? So we need the number That's of subscribers, basically an hour ago, and how many videos have... There's only 36... <laughs> oh. I'm just kidding, guys! Ah, y'all, really? thought, y'all thought I was giving really? you the answer. You have to be kidding me right now. <laughs> the hard part's the subscriber number, anyway. We almost made it through the show without Matt giving that. Right? <laughs> they don't. They. They. they so they, now it's they a one part question. Me. They couldn't understand. <laughs> me. I mean, Stephen Bono said, "Have you ever seen anything?" <laughs> I don't even. Huh. <laughs> they were strawberry, nineteen eighty three, three point eight seven pounds rock bass. It's definitely not the answer. <laughs> See, they still don't have it right. They still don't have it right. All right, so nobody's paying attention first to Matt. Of all, that's you, good. First of all, so good. Doug Scroggins got the 36 right because that's what our boy said. <laughs> what, see, you just you screwed that all up. <laughs> I mean, you have to, you, first of all, you have to have both of them. You have to have both of them. All right. <coughs> Everybody's oh, going to have 36. I guarantee Jerry, it. we do have more than 77 subscribers. Yeah. Yeah, just a few more. Barely. We so at this, at this point, uh, yeah, just the subscribers. We don't have a lot of you. Uh, YouTube's not really. We uh, we, we haven't just, been on there long. We just it? started. We just started uh, doing it. Yeah. So I did see a comment earlier that said we need to um, upload some more videos. But Jeff is in the process of that. Uh, he's been doing some that of the lately. older videos are. I mean, they're all right. But we. I mean, it goes. It'll be on like tonight or first thing in the morning straight to YouTube. <clears throat> yes. Straight to YouTube. Hey, I see a correct answer. Nearly. You do? Very. That's very close. I don't see it. Mm. Except for the one. He's got everything right but the answer you gave. Oh, well, that's not good. <laughs> see, I told you nobody listens to me. I don't anyway. even see that. And they, they, I, I've, done, I've, I've given away our trivia <clears throat> answer so many times that people might yeah, have really done it. bought the fact that I was just doing that, you know? Like, We're going to have to start awesome. doing that. Like, every week, Matt's going to give out the trivia question. I have given y'all a chance to read the trivia question, come up with a trivia question. <laughs> Don't even let me see the trivia question anymore. <clears throat> Smoke some you, you do a You do a wonderful job, though. Yeah, see, now, 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 now. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm, I'm seeing some answers that are really, really close. So yeah. I'm going to scroll back through and see if we can't hit up a question while we're waiting. You've only gave the answer away, like, three or four times, though. Three times to be exact. Three times. This doesn't even count. That was like 34% of the answer. I didn't finish what I was saying, number one. Number yeah, two, that's true. They still have the hard part. Did you see one? Because I hadn't seen anything yet. I've seen a couple with the correct no, number of we subscribers. Saw some that were yeah, and it can't be there. one point <clears throat> something something. It's got to be the number. Uh, What? I see one. Oh, the exact number? Yeah. There's, there's a bunch that are right now. But it's it's got to be the exact number Jeff said. Oh, four digits. It's four digit number, so you have to add some guessing in there because you may or may not can see that. How's it a four digit number when if you go to YouTube, it's always like one point something something something? Or you want this thing to be a little challenging, right? Okay, yeah, we are giving away <laughs> we are giving away some good stuff. Okay, yeah. well, I'm with you, Jeff. I mean, it I'm gives you the first three numbers. I'm, I'm out on this. <laughs> gives you the first three numbers. Um. If anybody's curious while everybody's li look, trying to figure out this answer, at Cumberland, I was throwing 20-pound line in really clear water, and the smallmouths didn't seem to care. And that's throwing tactical? I was throwing 20-pound P-line tactical, and normally I would drop down to 15 or 12 in that really clear water, but for some reason they didn't seem to mind. Ooh, I see one that's really, really close. 
Yeah. Really close. <clears throat> um, Smallmouth had never been much to really discriminate when they're real hungry. Ooh. No, not when they're hungry. That was close. You okay, Jeff? Got it. I got a, I got a winner. Got a winner. We got a winner. All right. Got so a winner. Tell them what the answer was. 1,765. Subscribers. And 36 videos. Who's the winner? Who's Tanner the winner? Green was the first one to come up on my feed. Tanner, Tanner Green. Green. All right. So, Tanner, send us a message with your shipping information. And uh, you don't have to give us your name because we already know that. <laughs> right, Jeff? I'm glad he clarified that. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, sorry. Because I, I wouldn't have known who actually sent the message. <laughs> we have it's a, a little do tricky sometimes. you have sometime. a silver Sharpie? Yes. We do have okay. a silver Sharpie. We got a silver Sharpie. Silver Sharpie. Let's sign the hat right now. We, right. Hang on. Get another one. I'm going to get the other one. Hang on. All right. No, this is this is a good one. Yeah, yeah, it's sharp. It's yeah. sharp. All right, so we're signing the hat right now. Yep. I like this paint pen. Yep. All right, we got a paint pen. I like that one. It's cool. Do I need to shake it up? No, it's shake good. it up, Matt. That's okay. good. It's kind of fun. <laughs> All right, you're good. <laughs> Lay it I on give, the table. <laughs> give it one last shake. <laughs> don't press down too hard uh yeah james you were close a lot of the guys were really 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 close so it is 1765 subscribers which tells me that the paint pen is awesome well, i you told you i like that yeah ladies and guys that aren't subscribed to our youtube channel um go on and subscribe because a lot of people that download the podcast and listen to it the problem with that is you don't get the you don't get the privilege of actually seeing thrift and Jeff's beautiful faces. On what? On the video. What video? Why are we not oh on gosh. the video? Jeff, take over for a minute. I got it. I don't I don't even know how to I don't I don't even know how to communicate with that. <clears throat> I think we're getting ready to pass almost like two and a half or three million minutes viewed, which is That's pretty good. That is, is that's pretty stellar. Pretty awesome. So we definitely What I was getting that. at is it's it's just another avenue for people to visually <clears throat> watch the show, especially when we do a Mr. Wilson. Is that on the, or something. What's YouTube Stitcher? It's on YouTube. What's no, the Stitcher deal? Stitcher and, and, and iTunes, that's all podcasts. Those are podcasts. That's platforms. just where they can listen to the show. Gotcha, all gotcha. Right. Show, what uh, I was Spotify, at, we post podcasts at like five or six different places. Right. People listen on different platforms. People, I don't know what we do here. I just know we let's talk fish. <laughs> that's all I know. <laughs> that's that's right. probably all you need to know. And you're good at talking fish. I'll give you that. <laughs> you're really good at talking fish and catching fish. Um, all right, so show, – I feel like somebody was going to be gone, or we're not having a show next week. Am I correct? Um, I'm going to be here. Jeff? Maybe I'm wrong. I think. Um, oh, no. I know what it was. My wife's having work late next week. so. Yeah, because I'm here. I'm we here. Might, we may or may not have a show. But No, we're going to try. We're going to try. I'm we're going to work have it a out show. where I can be here. Show if till if seven Matt doesn't get six. here till late, me and Jeff will co-host the show until Matt comes in. All right. I'll pray for you all. Um, show next week. The show, show goes on. Week, and, I, and I'll be here as soon as I can get here. And it probably will be before 7 o'clock. So, guys, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Don't forget, we will be at the Rock Outdoors a week from Saturday from 10 to 3. Brian and I will both be there. And, and I happen to know that they just got a fresh rack of Fitzgerald rods in. Ooh, so, yeah, come check those they out. They did. Jerry called me today. Said they got a bunch of Fitzgerald rods. They got a bunch of loose stuff. They got a bunch of lunker hunt stuff. They got some. I think they got. I don't know. They got some Demicky stuff. Yeah, I think they did. To get some. Um, so yeah, we will. Uh, we will absolutely be there. And Brian will be at the SOS tournament this Saturday on Lake Norman. Y'all be sure to to, to look him up. And uh, so yeah, I believe that's it. I think that's it. Good show. All right. And I'm also going to throw in a bonus. a bonus. I'm going to pick a random subscriber. On the YouTube channel. On the YouTube channel to throw in another hat. So hey, there you go. Over the next 24 hours. <clears throat> so y'all got 24 hours to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and Jeff's going to give away another hat. Just randomly. Just randomly. Just, Just randomly. Because it's November. I think it should be to some uh, one of the most recent signups, though. It's going to be after the seven. It's going to be after the seven. Okay, af yeah. after the seventeen sixty five. Yeah. it's going to be after. Yeah, that yeah. word. Cool, um, Brian. I will not uh, show up to give the answer before the trivia next week. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> he buddy. said I'll show up just in time it's to possible. give the answer away. All right, guys. <laughs> thanks everybody for tuning in. It's been a fun show. It has and, been uh, fun. We will. Uh, well, we can't go fishing. No, you're going fishing Saturday. I'm going fishing Saturday. All right, I won't be fishing. Obviously. I will be fishing. We we'll actually have a tournament. Jim Creek in Charleston. Ooh, redfish. This weekend? Or yep. trout. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So we'll blast them off, and then we'll we'll go out and do a little trout fishing. 
There you go. Make My sure. new boat's in at Angler's Choice, so that's good news. <clears throat> I found out this week. It's there. Oh, really? It came in Monday. Yep. So I got to take uh, <clears throat> take some good stuff up there, and they'll be rigging it up here at the Spindale location. Um, so that's pretty exciting. I will have a we'll have a new boat here in another week or two. I have to take it out and bring it in. Thrift. That is true. You'll have to. I might can, just let uh, it's deer season. I might just let you take it out and bring it in. All right. I'll hopefully, do that. You can, <laughs> hopefully you can make it to the ramp. I don't on have the a problem. Hey, for it, you right. know the good thing about our new boats? What's that? With the Evan Rude, we don't have to break them in. A hundred percent true. Evan Rude, you turn it on, let it warm up, and go wide. Thank open you for drop. correcting me on that. And when I say breaking the boat, it's like. <laughs> For me, that's like dialing in my electronics and making sure my, yeah, all that's my pumps it. work. Yeah, make sure, sure everything works. works. Yeah, because um, the last thing we want to do is get to our first event of the year and you flip your aerator switch and nothing happens. Yes, this is true. <laughs> so, this is true. All right, guys, we can't go fishing. We'll sit right here and talk fish, and we'll see y'all next week. See you guys. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk Fish. Visit our private Facebook group to continue the conversation, post your questions, and talk with other fellow anglers at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Let's Talk Fish. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Fish Official and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. Join us again next episode for more actionable tips, tactics, and techniques directly from the pros. And remember, when we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and talk fish.